Hello, and welcome to another video. Uh, today, we have yet another question from The Endless River, who showed up in my Twitch chat on my previous stream and asked, What's the deal with blank accept, and why should I use accept exception, and what's the difference? And so, hopefully, we'll be able to answer all of those questions today. So let's jump into it. All right, so I'm going to start by making a small Python file that kind of demos, you know, what you might see if you've used blank except, and then we'll go about fixing it and then explaining all of the differences. So let's just, uh, I don't know, make, open some file that does not exist. <laughs> sure. Uh, something like this. And you might be like, well, I don't really care about the errors here, but we'll print an error if, if something happens. Error happens. Uh, and if we run this, it works as we would expect. So if we python3 t.py, uh, you'll see that because DNE doesn't exist, it prints error happens. And if we, you know, write something to that, echo hello world into DNE, and then we run this now, DNE no longer doesn't exist. <laughs> and it prints. Oh, there's actually one kind of weird subtlety here. Um, so we actually have two new lines here at the end of this file. This is completely unrelated to the exception stuff. Um, but that's because when I printed the file contents, print actually adds a second new line there. Um, and we could it fix that by doing this. And so now it'll print the contents exactly. But anyway, that's, that's not important to this discussion. Um, but if you run basically any linter that, you know, flake ape, pylint, etc. Uh, you try and run those linters on this file, it will report an error. So if we run flake8 on t.py, <clears throat> you'll get this E722, do not use bear except. And one unfortunate thing about flake8, actually there might be, I don't think there's an explain. Nope. <laughs> flake8 doesn't explain why you shouldn't do this, so that's that's what I'm here for. Um, but the, like, the response to this error, I've seen several different things. Like, one of them is to just no QA, <laughs> which of course silences the error. Uh, you could be more specific and silence just that specific error and do E722. Um, but that's not quite the right response to this. And there's there's two responses that I think are correct to this. Uh, well, correct in, in various terms. Um, and we'll go over both of them and what the differences are. So the one that I suggest almost always, so like 99.9% .9 of the time, is to change your blank accept to accept exception. And you'll see Flake8 is indeed happy with that. Uh, but you might ask, wait a minute, <laughs> isn't accept exception the same thing? And it's it's not quite. There's one very, very slight difference there. Uh, if we open up in a terminal, if we look at exception and we look at its base classes, uh, you'll see that it actually inherits from a class called base exception. And we look at base exceptions bases, that inherits from object. And this is in Python 3. We'll show some subtle, unfortunate differences in Python 2 later. Uh, but <laughs> in Python 3, all exceptions inherit from base exception. And there are actually some exceptions which inherit from base exception, which do not inherit from exception. So uh, you'll see like this is this is kind of the like exception tree of Python. Uh, and these are exceptions that will not be caught by accept exception. And then they are generator exit, which I don't I don't know why this one is in the list. I haven't done enough research on, on this to, to answer this question, but this one seems weird to me, but the rest of them make complete sense to me. Uh, and the other ones are system exit and keyboard interrupt. And this is the class of exception that's raised when you call sys.exit. And its its intention is to exit the interpreter. And keyboard interrupt is sent when you press control C on the keyboard, or I believe it's control Z on Windows. I don't spend that much time doing Python on Windows, so I, I could be wrong there, but I seem to remember that. But yeah, these two exception types, um, I would argue that you shouldn't catch them unless you're going to re-raise them. And we'll, we'll talk about re-raising in a second. But let's show an example where blank exception actually kind of breaks the world. Um, we're gonna have some sort of infinite loop. This is 
this is again like a silly example you might um you would probably have like a, a more reasonable example here um but we're gonna do we're just gonna print you know some some zzz and uh call time.sleep maybe we'll sleep for a second and we're just gonna do that in a loop and we're gonna catch all exceptions that happen here so maybe i don't know <laughs> There's memory corruption, or who knows? I, I don't know of anything that would actually cause time.sleep to raise an exception other than, like, memory error or, like, you know, something severely, severely bad happening. Or Control-C, which we'll see in a second. So if we run this script, and you'll see that it, you know, prints out some, some Zs, and if we try and kill it with Control-C, you'll see that we really can't. <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> Dumb pun. Um, and if you've ever run control C when you're like running a test or like running a program and it doesn't end immediately, this is probably what's happening. Somebody has put a too broad accept clause somewhere. And so it's, it's catching your keyboard interrupt and not allowing the process to die. Uh, but I'll actually show you another like kind of nifty thing that I learned, um, actually relatively recently. I wish I would have known this sooner. Uh, but you can actually send a more powerful termination signal than control C and at least on Linux. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this also works on Mac OS, but I don't think it works on windows. But if you do control backslash, that will send sig quit, which very few programs, uh, catch sig quit. And the default action for sig quit is to trigger a core dump. Um, and Python does not catch sig quit by default. You of course can attach a signal handler to it and then you know change how it works, but uh, control backslash will trigger sig quit. And so that's one way that you can you know forcibly kill a program that's doing this uh, except incorrectly. But let's change this to what I would fix this to. Um, exception. And so now if we run this program again, you know we have our, our nice little sleep loop, but when we control C it, it exits as you would expect. Um, yeah, let's, let's talk about, uh, the other alternative, which is to change this to accept base exception. Uh, this actually is the same in Python three. It is the same, same as accept colon. Um, however, this is seen as a bit of a more explicit way to absolutely catch every exception. And so almost all the winters are like, okay, you intend to do this. You did this on purpose. You're, you're all good. Um, but you'll see like changing this to base exception now reintroduces that same same bug there uh but the best practice that i've seen is if you have accept base exception you should always re-raise that exception uh, or re-raise some other exception in, in almost all cases you're just going to re-raise the same exception um, and you can re-raise an exception in python by just doing a zero argument raise statement so if you run run this now uh even though we're kept capturing uh keyboard interrupt maybe we're doing some logging here or like some some cleanup work that we need to do uh but if we control c now uh you'll see that we did print that error happened but we've re-raised keyboard interrupt and the other cool thing about the raise statement with zero arguments is it maintains the stack trace um it's it doesn't make any sense here because like there is there's not really any there's no function calls other than sleep, and sleep is implemented in C, so you don't actually see the frames of sleep, but um, that's how that works. Now, um, when, when I when I used to show this demo in Python 2, uh, of course, you probably shouldn't care about Python 2 anymore because it's, it's 2020, like, <laughs> let it go. Uh, but I, I will show you one difference between blank accept and... Uh, and accept base exception. And that is in uh, accept base exception. Oops, should case this properly. And I'm just gonna put a, um, just gonna put a re-raise here just so it actually <laughs> exits uh, quickly. And we're just going to do print ZZZ. And then we're going to raise uh, keyword interrupt just to show that it works. Interrupt. And if we run this in Python 2, even though I'm using Python 3 print statements, but that's fine. Uh, you'll see that like we're going down the base exception path. 
But in Python 2, you can actually raise exceptions that are just strings. Uh, this is, of course, gone in Python 3 because now we have you know, exception classes and that class hierarchy and everything works great. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm wrong. Apparently this changed in the old style classes. Oh, okay. This changed in Python 2.7, <laughs> but you can still raise an old style class. Is that what it is? Uh, raise C. Okay, yes, you can raise you can raise an old style class. That's the difference. It's not string exceptions, it's old style classes. Uh, but in older versions of Python 2, you could raise strings, which is wild. But this class here actually doesn't participate in the in the base exception hierarchy. So you can see here that we printed some other error happened. Um, but if you don't care about Python 2, then like, as far as I understand, there's no reason to use blank except if you want to appease linters. But some people don't care about appeasing linters and would rather tell them to uh, pound sand or whatever. But anyway, this has been a, another video where I explain stuff. If you guys want to hear something else explained, you know, leave a comment below or join my Twitch stream or, you know, message me on Twitter or whatever else, whatever else place you can find me. Um, I'm happy to explain more stuff and th these are really fun for me to make. So thank you all for watching and hopefully you guys enjoyed.